Welcome to uh, the Dream Podcast. So today we got uh, Duke Choi, uh, who we just launched yesterday, uh, the, uh, the Kim Sang-dong Project exhibit. Yeah, we had an opening yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, to start off, um, why don't we start by describing what the project is? It's, you know, it's a video exhibit, uh, people can, it's a one hour, uh, one hour film. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think we're in the beginning, um, so there are actually two formats of this project. Mm-hmm. There's a documentary format that is, hasn't been fully completed yet, and then there's just the installation view. Mm-hmm. Exhibit installation, which is uh, being exhibited at KRC for the next month, it consists of this uh, hour-long trip, uh, video clip, that's uh, been split into about 10 minutes, roughly. Yeah, each. F- 5 to 10 minutes. Split yeah. by themes, rough, uh, rough themes. Yeah. And each clip was loaded into a TV. Um, into a TV about like, like this. 40, inch, inch. 40 inch TVs. Mm-hmm. 8 40 inch TVs. All laid next to each other. Yeah, they're all in one line. They're all like playing in a loop. And I don't think they all start at the same time, right? They're all like on their own timeline. Uh, whenever the, you turn it on. Yeah, whenever you're turning on, <laughs> it, it doesn't all start in the mm-hmm. same sync. So, like, when you do sit down, you might sit down in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you just have to watch from there mm-hmm. and then wait till it loops back to where you finished or started from. And then it makes a hole. Uh, and, and some people like. Uh, when and there's a headset and a chair for people to right. watch from. And, yeah, and then uh, you can go from from back to from the very right to the left. Um, mm-hmm. One person told me <laughs> they started from the very very far <coughs> left mm-hmm. or far right, and then as they got closer, it got more and more personal for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. They got like they were like, wow, this got really personal. And then, and then some people from the left to right, they're mm-hmm. like, "Wow, it's like a nice timeline." Mm-hmm. You know? So you, you can skip, you can mm-hmm. skip channels and, and still understand just one channel. If you just mm-hmm. re- watch one channel, it, the, the essay is so constructed um, that you would get it within just that channel. Mm-hmm. It's made to be that way. It's not supposed to like cross over to the next channel or like. Um, I mean, there's like an overall theme, uh-huh. but each channel ha- serves its own purpose of like how that whole thing was been built. Yeah. And then there's this uh, pamphlet. And then, and then there's a pamphlet, mm-hmm. you know, so there's Korean and, yes. and English. And, and, and my fiance more context. Tra- and translated them. These mm-hmm. are really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it gives a lot of context because um, it says all the channels um, in the beginning. I can read a little thing that says. In order to look into this archive as a documentary, I use inherited mythologies from my grandma who studied fashion and grouped images together with the garments worn by Kim sang dong I see tailoring, which is my great-grandfather's profession, as a way to understand the archive as material to, na- to narrate, to, to be narrated into essay film. A little recap of, it, of his life. Style in Japan, with some farm work in the U.S., that was involved here and there with independence work. He did no. He did the independence work first, and mm-hmm. then he went to Japan. I mm-hmm. think he was invited to go to Japan, mm-hmm. and then he was part of like the YMCA and the and the Yuhak Dongyo Dong Yuhak thing. Mm-hmm. He was a, yeah, and then and there he got really political, and then he went to America, mm-hmm. became a farmer, and then he was uh, involved. He led the Pamintugi, and then. Um, uh, joined the Shimindang and uh, was one of the opposition uh, um, congress members. And he was, what was that bill that he was trying to stop from passing? They were sleeping near the chair, what was the it? The revision of the Kuka Bomb. Oh, the National Security Act. So stopping the that, National Security that Act. It is in place today still. Yeah, during the Isman era, right? Yeah. And yeah. then. Uh, Mayor of Seoul after kick, after Isman was kicked out. But then, but then before that, he, there was a struggle in '56 to stop the the third the third uh, the third term election for Isman Man. So yeah. Isman Man could have potentially not been the president in '56, but um, Shiniki died, and then his opponent, right? Yeah, right, right. there was no. Yeah, and he magically died of a heart failure, right? <coughs> mm. And. Uh, so, recent man became the dictator again. He became now a dictator. He changed the constitution. Even, even though he was not supposed to be reelected for a third time? No, you, you can only have two terms. 
So isn't he supposed to resign? Yeah, and yeah so, so this is what's crazy. <laughs> Why is he even running? <laughs> so that's even crazy because this is, this is what the dictators do. They're super smart. Oh, gosh, Pop- we had our own Trump back in the day. Pop- <laughs> yeah, Pop- <laughs> Chi did the same thing. So, so um, recent man in 56, his, his liberal party tried to change the, um, the, the constitutional bill to run for a third-term presidency. And so they did do that. And, 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 and all the Democratic Party were, like, protesting and doing all these things. But then all the, all the military police were, like, stopping the, these protests and, and <coughs> letting it out. So they, they had full control, you know. Yeah. And, uh, um, they, you know, they, and the recent man was able to, to – so it was kind of like passing the Yushin, but, like, mm-hmm. the earlier version, version number one. <laughs> Let's call it version number one. Yushin Light. Yeah, the Yushin, yushin Light, <laughs> if we talk in digital terms. Maybe Yushin 2.0, mm-hmm. and then and then Park Chung-hee did you know Yushin 2.3 or 2 3.0 you know, uh-huh. and he, they did the same thing. They both changed the constitutions before the the, the last term or their second term. They made a third term, and then then did atrocities. Yeah, so um, it's like a greed of power. It's really weird. So mayor. And then prosecuted under the Park, Park Chung Hee regime. Yeah, because they, they accused him of uh, doing counter revelry things. Mm-hmm. They, they accused him to move, move to the U.S. and continue protesting there uh, until passing away. This is basically what how it started conceptually. Mm-hmm. Um, well, what do you mean by how it started conceptually? Like my I was I was interested more of like my my grandma making mm-hmm. humbugs. Mm-hmm. I remember that when I was a kid and and as an artist where I was like making paintings and, and other materials and sculptures and things like this I always wanted to know why I was getting these like kind of hands you know these, these kind of engineering scan like kisu so you mean the, the storyline of the video clip kind of traces back how you learned about the issue yourself right? exactly it's so, kind of like hey guys come Come, come, explore this topic with me, and let's you know check it out. Yeah, it, it, I'm definitely like, like helping the audience navigate through through my search. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm like searching through all these things, and then like discovering like, oh, this event has been sanitized in the in the CIA uh, electronic reading room, or mm-hmm. uh, so so like. In the very beginning, I mean, just I didn't even know about Kim Jong Un, but like I just always knew that in my in my mom, in like when my mom told me and my dad told me, they were always like, yeah, there was like this like political figure in our family, but we don't really know much about him. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, just like some civilian government. I'm like, what? So did you start the research in 2012 in Korea? I, I started this, start? so I started this whole investigation mm-hmm. in 2010 because my grandma she had Alzheimer's and mm-hmm. then I was photographing her and I wanted to show her these old photos mm-hmm. because it's like at that at that age they don't need money they don't need anything you know they just need like um, some memories or something mm-hmm. she was 84 she died like three months after I filmed all this stuff mm-hmm. it, it was sad it was like deeply sad because. When I was trying to get like some some information from her, she just couldn't remember. She just like mm-hmm. was able to see this photograph, and like so that's how Channel One starts. You know? mm-hmm. And in this manuscript, it's all it's all connected. So it's like Channel One, Channel Two, Channel Three, Channel Four. So it gives you some kind of context mm-hmm. of like what channel, what it meant, and like what it did. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it started in 2012. I, I went, and then in 2012. Or 2010, it started, and then like I graduated from Cal Arts, and then I went to to Korea. I just like left. I mean, mm-hmm. the financial crisis like took a big toll. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the, in the U.S. You mean? Yeah, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. and like just lost everything. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was just like, okay, well, I might as well just travel. And mm-hmm. I traveled around, and at, at that time, I was kind of lost. You know, like graduated from Cal, Cal Arts and. And everyone had their like. They, everyone had a really strong identity there, you know, mm-hmm. like, like the like Black Panthers and and uh, like a lot of my African American artists were like really like rooted by their like strong roots in, in social movements like in mm-hmm. the sixties and seventies and like, you know, I'm I'm inspired by that too, stuff too, you know. I, I like Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. I like I like Martha. I like love Martha. And the Asian Americans part of the movement. 
Yeah, yeah, but see, I didn't know that that time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know any of that movement stuff. Mm. I didn't know that Asian Americans were like struggling and doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But I knew that they were doing it abroad, mm-hmm. right? I knew I knew about the independence movement mm-hmm. towards trying to liberate themselves from the Japanese. Like I knew about these things, but like very briefly. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have my context. I was like l- kind of lost, and I, my identity was like, you know, I'm like. I love punk rock. I was a skater. Loved hip hop. Did graffiti. I still do graffiti. You know, like I was like it's like subcultures. You know, and and that and that is all just like borrowed things from all these other things that you know. And and like my teacher, he 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 comes from the Chicano movement. You know, mm-hmm. they did all the student walkouts and you know protests from the Vietnam War and mm-hmm. did all these things. And I'm like, wow, all these people have these like great identities. You know, and I grew up with no Asian people around me. Mm-hmm. I grew up with like. Every other every other race and, and, and in a single mother like apartment complex low income like I, I didn't have any Korean friends I didn't mm. speak Korean I didn't identify with Korean culture I, you know I was where, like where yeah. was this where where I where I grew up yeah. I grew up off uh, Imperial and Harbor Imperial and Harbor yeah Harbor I'm that's that's like this. that's like the borderline of like Fullerton and La Habra. Oh, right. uh, but that's not that's not where the rich that's not where like where all the Koreans live uh-huh. now like the Koreans live on the other side of the hill kind of towards like but they like that they live nice you know mm. they live in like these suburban areas mm. that are like millions of uh, houses that are like seven hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars we didn't we, like lived off Imperial Street where you, where I all I saw was tr- uh, big rigs mm-hmm. drive by you know but like so anyway. Um, in 2012, I went to Korea, traveled around, and then, like, so this whole generation of my mom, my grandma was the last one to pass away in mm-hmm. that generation. So I was like, oh, okay, I, I probably will never, like, get to know who this generation was and what they did. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and so, but, but I was told that, um, that the, her, her brother, her brother's wife was alive, and so I went to go visit that family, and mm-hmm. they're like distant cousins, right? Mm-hmm. And and she showed me a wedding photograph, and that's how I found Kim Sang Dong. He was like wearing a leather jacket at a wedding, mm-hmm. and it had a cane and, and a crazy mustache, like. Also, that was a wedding of a relative. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So you're like, of course, like, that dude <coughs> looks really distinct, and like, mm-hmm. he, of course, you're gonna question who that person is mm-hmm. if this person, if this older lady is living. It's like one head. Taller than yeah, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, everyone's like half the size of, and he's wearing a cane and a leather jacket, like, and then underneath it is a humbug. Uh-huh. So you're like, um, okay, this is really strange. Like, who is this guy? He seems a little like out of character. And then you, and then I, and then I was told that like, he was like this, this like soul mayor, and then mm-hmm. and then it clicked because mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I was told all these things, mm-hmm. but I didn't know who the, the name was and and his actual position. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I realized there was this coup d'état. I mean, it, you Google you Google Kim Jong Un even in English and Korean, mm-hmm. you you see a small like red thing. In, like if you go if you look up a soul mayors on Wiki, mm-hmm. you'll see like a little asterisk mm-hmm. next to Kim Jong Un's name, and it's it's in red. And everyone else has like their own like histories, but mm-hmm. then that one, the asterisk meant that he was like the first voted Seoul mayor, and ah. it's like a special condition. And you're like, what? Like what happened? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it poses a lot of questions when you when you when little things like that, mm-hmm. you know, little details. <laughs> so, um, so it was a journey, kind of, to your family history roots, yeah. and also like Korean modern history. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely was a journey. It was a big mm-hmm. journey, and still mm-hmm. is a journey. And 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 I think it gotten a little bit more political now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think finding these archives mm-hmm. is is an act where you're trying to like constantly understand what happened, mm-hmm. and and then you just like end up in these roadblocks. Mm-hmm. And, but then when you do find the material, it, it just like adds to the narrative. It adds to like what he actually did. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and I was really surprised. I mean, some people aren't archivable. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't like. Some people are just like. Leave never, very little traces. Behind yeah, they live. They leave very little traces before they pass away. Uh-huh. You know, and he he. I think he understood this because he was like a journalist mm-hmm. in the thirties. Mm-hmm. 
So he understood the camera. I think he understood the camera at a very young age mm-hmm. because. So so this is interesting too because I think this is like a kind of more of a theory, mm-hmm. but Japan invented cameras. <coughs> they invented, Japan invented cameras. Yeah, they they adopted they invented like the earliest photographs come from Japan, right? Like eighteen eighties. But it's not Japan invented it's the a, first camera. Yeah, not the first oh, camera, okay. but like Western. So like when they when they like when the when the when the colonists mm-hmm. of Western civilization mm-hmm. invented these cameras. Mm-hmm. Uh, Japan it adopted them very early, uh-huh. and the earliest photographs in Japan are like from like 1860s, 1870s. And, I, and yeah, I, there's a huge boom back then in Japan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they love ca- cameras, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And and I've seen these old photographs, and they're beautiful. They're like you see the pristine state of of pre modernism. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful landscapes, mm-hmm. and, and nowadays you don't really see it. it's all. Which developed. the Japanese people wanted to get rid of because they felt it was like, oh, we are not civilized yet. We need to civilize very quickly. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. Th- maybe that's the thing. Like, like, but but just that just that image of it being captured mm-hmm. was amazing because um, I think this is kind of the early introduction of photography for mm-hmm. Kim Jong Un because the earliest photo I found of him. And we have the original photo mm-hmm. is from 1927, mm-hmm. c- uh, circa. Mm-hmm. So it's in the 1920s, and and the the Tongni Pinyomgon, the Independence Memorial Hall mm. in, in Korea, they have the original photos of of Kim Song Don with mm-hmm. a bunch of students. And do you need to say that in there that Kim Song Don? Went to college in Japan or something? Or it was what? a it was a study abroad. So I think he got his master's degree at Meiji. Mm-hmm. Or nowadays they call that Tokyo University of Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think that was the, one of the main reasons is because there was a there was a rice famine or a, a drought or a mm-hmm. flood. No, it was a flood, and it flooded all of North Korea's rice fields. Mm-hmm. And so he 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 was brought up as a rice farmer. Mm-hmm. Right, and and when he was when he was brought up as a rice farmer, I think his family had a lot of a lot of rice farmers. Mm-hmm. A lot of, you know, so so he I think that's why he's so big because he was able to like, <laughs> you know, uh, haul all this rice and bales of rice and stuff. But like, I thought he was just tall because his ancestry is like I'm, the northern I'm, nomads or something. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, <laughs> that too. I, I have nomadic blood, <coughs> definitely. I mean, um, but yeah, there there was a there was a. a, a a, a big flood that was going on in Korea mm-hmm. in 1922, mm-hmm. um, and there there was also rice famines in 1919 in, in Japan, mm-hmm. which also spurred a lot of really interesting political ideology. Mm-hmm. In ni- uh, I don't know if you know this guy named Park Yor. No, Park Yor was an anarchist, mm-hmm. and he he uh, married a, a Japanese woman named Kaneko Fumiko. Mm-hmm. Kane- Kaneko- oh, Park Yor. Uh, Park Yor, yeah. Uh, so, still not. <laughs> so this dude, mm-hmm. this dude was a, a serious anarchist, and he wrote mm-hmm. a lot of manifestos. But like, so that 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 time was just, I think, a really like like big mix of like. It was a time of big, big change. Yeah. yeah, a lot of change. Mm-hmm. There was mm-hmm. introduction of communism. Mm-hmm. Uh, anarchism that time was not the form of anarchy we see today. Mm-hmm. So anarchy today is 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 long distant from the original form of what anarchy meant. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of interesting. And the nihilist perspective was a little different too. Mm-hmm. Um, but all that stuff was happening, you know. So, so when 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 I think when Kim Jong Un left to Japan, it's like, you know, the, he left with nothing. Mm-hmm. He, the rice farms were, were, weren't working. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jap- Japan fully colonized Korea, and, and everyone was struggling. Maybe it was during his stay in Japan that he got exposed to photography. Yeah, I yeah. think so because, but but also like, um, in the independence movement, nineteen nineteen, he mm-hmm. he was like he was like holding the tekuki and mm-hmm. like he says this in his memoirs. If, I mean, I think this documentary serves a purpose or this mm-hmm. installation serves. But if you look read his actual autobiography, mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting because he speaks about the the, the independence movement mm-hmm. in a very vivid manner. But mm-hmm. I couldn't explain all that because I don't have photographic material mm-hmm. or I don't have documentation. Mm-hmm. Right? I can like. Say what he, I can say some things, but like he he was like saying he was passing out the Tongni Shimun, mm-hmm. so the independence uh, manifestos from the it news, mm-hmm. independence news, and and so when he was passing these out, I, mm-hmm. I actually was able to find the the 
the actual newspapers that he was passing out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they were recently uploaded on the internet in 2009. Ten, 100 years later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So, um, but yeah, he, he, back to him being a student. Mm-hmm. Um, oh no, we were, we were talking about um, how he was leaving Tracy behind and other people is hard to find. So he, there's yeah, a yeah. lot of records of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, so there's, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of pictures. records in, in, in Japan. You know, about the pictures, um, yeah. I, something that struck me is, you know, you, you pointed this out too, that half of the pictures that we see in the, in the exhibit are in the pictures he wrote, he had this bold X in front of him. Right. Um, let's, 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 talk, let's talk about, the, let, let me get to that point. <laughs> okay. I think that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. That's a really important mm-hmm. part. So, like, um, I, I think this is really significant because, like, these photos. Mm-hmm. So, if, you, if you're going to colonize a, a, a country, mm-hmm. you want to deprive it from its, all of its, like, its knowledge. You, know? mm-hmm. you want to change its language. Mm-hmm. You want to change its religion. Mm-hmm. You want to um, uh, remove all of its historical artifacts. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is how genocides happen, mm-hmm. right? Native American people, Armenian people, um, I mean, you name it. Mm-hmm. Even today, Syrian people, mm-hmm. all the artifacts are being destroyed by mm-hmm. ISIS. I mean, this is a lot of crazy stuff, but this mm-hmm. is what colonization does, mm-hmm. right? It destroys another people's culture mm-hmm. in order to dominate them and, and, and subjugate them to, to being subhumans. Mm-hmm. And so, this, so, like, so, like, what's interesting, these photos surviving... Is is a resistance mm-hmm. from from all that, you know? If you have one photo that proves all that, mm-hmm. then then you then you have something. You have mm-hmm. a story. You have something compelling, you know. <coughs> and, and so, so I, I think that's really interesting. But like, when you look at America's structure, the archives, you know, photos from nineteen seventy or eighteen seventy, nineteen twenty, ain't mm-hmm. nothing. It's nothing, you know, because. Because there, there's nothing to, there's no threat hmm? to, towards American, American um, uh, civilization at that time, you know? You they, mean there, there's no pictures from the 1870s? No, no, they, there is pictures. Oh. And, and those, those aren't so significant, as significant as like a, a colonized country. Like getting mm-hmm. photos from a colonized country mm-hmm. compared to a country that colonizes mm-hmm. is like completely different paradigms of, of what... The value of the photograph, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. like here we have institutions, mm-hmm. the National Archives of Congress, and you know our National Library, mm-hmm. the Congress, oh. uh, National yeah, yeah, National Library of Congress. Yeah, the National Library of Congress. They have mm-hmm. numerous photos of all these, all these, you know, mm-hmm. even of colonized people. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's there's good goods and bads of, of having that kind of institution mm-hmm. you, you preserve the history but then you also give all the power to those institutions mm-hmm. and so it, um, back to like Kim Jong Don with all these X marks in in the material in mm-hmm. the photographic material I did not do that um, he did that when he was auto archiving himself before he was passing away because he knew that he had something to say mm-hmm you know, of all these things that he's done, that all the material that he's, he's like, archived himself, mm-hmm. I think he, like, wished to leave something behind for someone to pick up. And, and, and that, that was a dangerous part because, like, many of Kim jong Un's family um, it worked to do other things. You know, so they weren't really mm-hmm. interested in a lot of the political things that Kim jong Un did. I mean, they, they respected his legacy. When I saw the X marks, I thought maybe he was being asked when he was being tried by the military coup d'état. Um, uh, he was being asked to Antifa, oh, "Weren't you here protesting? And weren't you here?" And he was like, he was uh, uh, forced well, to mark in, himself in the because they're like so so roughly made, like whoosh, whoosh, like, "Oh man, you're covering the photo." Well, That's I, I, I think I think in one book I, I think <laughs> mm-hmm. we were talking about was during the national security law and mm-hmm. like during the first president mm-hmm. of recent men they, there's this book yeah. and, and it's never been published uh, it's not supposed to be sold it's not supposed to be uh, given to the mm-hmm. public this is like it's wh- still classified? This is, but this is what you're this talking about the photo book of the April 19th revolution 
No, no, for, before that. There's oh. this other book that spans from 1954 up until 1958. Mm-hmm. And that, that's like the Democratic Party's like uh, memorial book. Okay. So it's like only given to politicians, right, this book. Mm-hmm. And Kim jong Un had it. And so when he's looking through this book, this book, he, he, he makes X marks on mm-hmm. him because um, he like, like just wishes that when whoever opened these archives mm-hmm. can like find that. He's like, I marked this because I'm here. Like, don't, don't forget me. I'm here. You know, I'm in this image. Like, uh-huh. find me. Uh-huh. Find my story. Like, find me. I'm, I'm, I exist. There's archives of me. <coughs> Mm-hmm. Someone find me, you know. I think that's what he's saying. But like in the April Revolution magazine, mm-hmm. I I show that photo because in the video I only show the text. Yeah, I was curious about that. Yeah, I only show the text because you can like look up the April Revolution. There's so much documentary. Oh, yeah, it's school children protesting. Yeah, you can see like you can see, you can see all that. It's that's that's there, you know. Uh-huh. That's 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 searchable. Uh huh. But the the text, the mm-hmm. propaganda. Mm-hmm. Is is what I think is subversive. Who published the the book, the photo book? It's called Dongbang Dongbang Photo News. Uh huh. And I tried looking for them, and they don't exist anymore. You can't find anything about it. So it's not an organization or anything. It's, it's a it's a publisher. It was but a publisher. Yeah, I, I think it was a it was a group of journalists, but I think they were prosecuted or like I mean they probably just don't exist anymore. Right? Okay. I wish to know more about the history of this like <clears throat> Dongbang Photo News, but they don't exist anymore. They're not. They're like they were like an independent publishing company. The mm-hmm. graphic design is amazing. Mm-hmm. I love Korean graphic design. Mm-hmm. It's it's like maybe it, it's just like the, my my. It's like almost as the the same love as Swiss graphic design. What design? Graphic de- the Swiss Switzerland. Swiss graphic yeah. design. So um, anyway, yeah. uh, what what do you find inspiring in the in the text in the captions on the. April April nineteenth revolution follow book. <laughs> I, I, I find I find it useful for, for, for just to have the text because um there, there's that imaginary involved again. So like when you're reading text It was a little bit poetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very poetic. Inspired. And so like there, again it's like and, and the English they match the Korean at all. The English was like a song way. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So so it's like so there's like levels of translation uh-huh. and there's a level of like commu- like this level of, of like mis mistranslation, mm. trying to get it out to the to the other world, mm-hmm. and then there's also um, just I, like I, this imaginary, like you reading this, and then you can identify, like of course that police do that, mm-hmm. of course that the government does this stuff. You you can read, the, you can like say, oh, you can get these these like I feel like you can get these these texts, right? And then put it into like Ferguson or, or like put it into any kind of police atrocity, mm-hmm. and it will say the same shit, right? Mm-hmm. It'll, it'll it'll say fist versus arms, mm-hmm. bloodshed, um, oppression, mm-hmm. struggle, overcoming. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are all just like really bold words. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Korean, there's hancha and all these things that I don't re- I didn't translate directly. I, I think the Korean was like the poetic license and. Like it was because there are some audience for the Korean was oh other Koreans are gonna read this so let's tell them about how beautiful the struggle was whereas the English you say oh the foreigners gonna read this so mm. let's make sure foreigners know what happened or something like focus on the factual well, like briefly because when they spelled <laughs> justice they spelled justice for it was like just tick uh-huh. <laughs> so you're like oh yeah like typos that's great I love that you know uh-huh. like. I love that. Mm-hmm. It's a set, it's a set sixty year mistake, mm-hmm. <laughs> or a fifty yeah. year mistake, or ever how long ago that was. It'd be. I think it would have been interesting to see, because there are all this like stuff describing things, and know what picture it was that that thing was describing, when it said like uh, the blood of five million citizens or something like that. Mm. Yeah, things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. the it's it's an imaginary. It's like. Mm-hmm. These words are so simple that we can imagine these things, but then when you actually look at the book, mm-hmm. it's it's pretty harsh. This this magazine, this this April Revolution magazine, um, does not depict the revolution so glorified. It mm-hmm. it, it actually depicts it 
really brutally. I mean, like, people people were killed in yeah, the first yeah, protest, like, there, and they're school children. Yeah, yeah. And that's what sparked the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's that kid that was shot in the eye with a gas canister. Oh god! Um, yeah, I saw that picture. Yeah, yeah. So, th- so there's these there's these photos in mm-hmm. that magazine, mm-hmm. and I think that's why the the, the level of cruelty mm-hmm. in it is why it's been banned from from the Korean government mm-hmm. and doesn't ever want to show it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, maybe you can say it's the freedom of the press, blah 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 blah. But mm-hmm. like, it's not free right now. It's 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 a banned material. You, know? mm-hmm. you can't show that. You can't like republish it and give it out. And you, you probably get like I, I saw it in a history book. You saw, you saw that one? I saw the I saw oh, this the guy. photo with the kid like drowned in in the water, floating like, yeah. dude. That that gas canister was military grade, from what I heard. Mm-hmm. I don't know that. I don't know. So if someone so, was arming, uh, arming mobs. Yeah, he was uh, or mobs. Uh, he was arming gangpe. What's gangpe? Oh, gangsters. Yeah, he was arming gangsters. He had his own private army of gangsters. Yeah, and I yeah. think that that it was them who did it. Well, well, yeah, they yeah. Them. Yeah, well, see, like that. There, there was these mm-hmm. like hired uh, gangsters mm-hmm. and mafia back then, mm-hmm. and, and and Kim Jong Un was also like marked for assassination mm-hmm. many times, like. There's these English articles about that, and mm. and I, I um, tr- translated in Korean, but like mm. you won't see that in Korean news. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's there's just like there was just so much corruption going on that time. It was just scandalous. You know? What was the point of that segue into the photo book, though? Because nothing in there was about Kim Sang Do. We're we're trying to like show the oh yeah, so, the time. So, so 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 that's what I wanted to get to. Is like um, there was this there's in that text there was mm-hmm. this. Uh, oh, 12, 12 long years finally ended, mm-hmm. right? The twelve young years is what's referencing to Asian man's rule, mm-hmm. and then and then in the bottom says, "A warning for all future dictators." Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh-huh. this little text, and then you're like, "Oh, the premonition," you know? Mm-hmm. You're like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is like this is like the true warning for all dictators, like." Someone foresaw that there was going to be more dictators, or they were like, "Oh, <laughs> watch <Korea>? out! Watch <laughs> out! We're, we will, we will uprise again." Mm-hmm. And then that's Gwangju eighteen mm-hmm. years later, and mm-hmm. and that and the was nineteen eighty seven struggle too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, and then now, I mean, the nineteen eighty seven struggle. That's mm-hmm. right, one year before Kim Jong Un passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought he saw democracy, but I don't think I don't think democracy ever restored until. Over how long, right? In Korea? Yeah, Korea. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, it's sad. I mean, because there's so many independence fighters that mm-hmm. were li- trying to liberate from the Japanese mm-hmm. and then fighting against these dictatorships, and they were never able to even see um, the, 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 the liberation, the restoration of democracy. Mm-hmm. But then also, we st- and then there's another part where we can't even see is a, is is our longing to reunite with the North Korean people, mm-hmm. you know? And these are like these three main main core things that like kind of inspired me to do this project, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? Mm. Because like you know, Dozong On Chung Oh, he he died in jail. Mm-hmm. I, I I talked to his family about it. You know, he, they never got to see democracy or liberation from the Japanese. Yeah, there. I I was reading on people. I think a lot of the people who had some leadership in the 1850s through the 1950s or 1990s period lived very <coughs> <coughs> very dynamic lives. They saw a lot of change happen, um, and yeah. very fast. Yeah, mm-hmm. super super sped up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I th- I think that is in correlation with with. What what happened in America, mm-hmm. or what America was doing in their foreign policies? Mm-hmm. Right? Korea was like this like little proxy to to be a strong arm of like capitalism and 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 be a pivot point mm-hmm. or a landing point or whatever. But like you know, it's the Vietnam War. Uh, <coughs> that, that was really really atrocious because. You know, uh, Park Chung-hee 
benefited from that bloodshed. Mm -hmm. you know, he sent the Marines, the Korean Marines, to Vietnam and mm -hmm. caused all these atrocities. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's monstrous. Like, I think I think probably that's like. And like Korea has always always like been like the defensive side mm -hmm. of things and never really like went out to like attack other countries. Mm -hmm. But that was like the only time, maybe not old, not the only time, but like in in modern history is when when they've involved in a foreign conflict mm -hmm. because of communism, capitalism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I, I think that's just like really sad to that like that. That, that happened. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I really wish no one was involved in that in those kind of wars because, war, like, did we not learn from the Korean War? You know, mm -hmm. that wars divide families and kill families and wipe out generations mm -hmm. of people. It's like we didn't learn that, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, sorry to get so sad about that. Um, <laughs> you know, when you're um, talking about the the project. Uh, when was this when we met here two months ago? It was in, in November. -ish. Yeah, with Paul. Well, we, we initially we initially started it last year mm -hmm. in like summer, mm -hmm. but all this crazy stuff happened with me, like my mother passed yeah. away. So, mm -hmm. so. so I, I remember when when we met there and you're explaining the project and showing us some some of the early clips. Yeah. Um, you're talking about how. Uh, this place, this building, which was used for such and such, for example, the, the mayoral, the mayoral office of Kim Sang Dong, it's not an art museum. This became this other thing, oh, yeah. and uh, it's kind of like re, and it's kind of like covering up history. And yeah, uh, I, I didn't see I much know. of that, uh, you know, laid out in the in the clip. Oh, uh, would you like to oh. first, first? Could you explain what 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 happened with? Because people haven't seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I actually. So what happened with Kim Sang Dong's mayoral office building? And yeah, yeah. So um, actually, let's start with <coughs> Channel Three. Mm -hmm. So Channel Three was the the Pan Min mm -hmm. and in there, uh, in this in this um, uh, series TV series called Yang In Shi Day, mm. they 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 show this fictionalized drama. Of the Seoul Museum of Art. Right? Mm -hmm. Today is the Seoul Museum of Art. This is the building, but it actually is an old Japanese court mm -hmm. that tried all the independence fighters. So wow. I, I thought it was really ironic because in Channel Two, we people were about, shot there. Yeah, yeah, no, in the, in the, it, in the ins inside courtyard. They, they were they were prosecuted. Uh -huh. All the all the independence fighters uh -huh. that were um, you know told on by the Chinese pa or uh -huh. whoever whoever told on them were prosecuted in those courts and then and then either were killed, jailed, or disappeared, you know? Mm -hmm. And and then so it's interesting because they're like... Oh, so it was a prison but not an execution, execution no, no, yard. No, it, it, it was a courtyard. Courtyard. It was to prosecute, ah. you know, persecute the, the, the Koreans. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know, legally. They did mm -hmm. trials there, right? And, and so... Uh, it becoming the Seoul Museum of Art. First, mm -hmm. first, it's depicting that it was the Panmin Tukwi's courtroom, and they, they're prosecuting all the Chinese pa and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But ironically, it was actually the, the opposite. No, also opposite. Huh? Oh, that it was. Yeah, well, so it, it, it served both roles then, right? No, no, no. Huh? So, so the original building for the Panmin Tukwi was mm -hmm. a different building somewhere else. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I, ha I have an original photo of the Panmin Tukwi's building. And did they move? It, it wasn't. It wasn't <coughs> there originally. It was just never <coughs> in this Japanese court. Uh huh. The Japanese court was just like serving that purpose uh, judicially, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm sure, like uh, after liberation, that court was served as like a another court, mm -hmm. probably on a lower level or something. Mm -hmm. But that was not the Panmin Tukwi's court. They did not use that court, that actual court, mm -hmm. because when they shot this film in 2002, mm -hmm. many of those buildings were destroyed. Like mm -hmm. so, the the original National Assembly was right in front of the Kyombukung. Mm -hmm. That's gone. So many of these old Japanese buildings were destroyed, mm -hmm. but they decided to leave the Seoul Museum of Art and then change it. In on that same year, they they built the Seoul Museum of Art. Huh? A new one. No, the, no, that that same that same court. Mm -hmm. So that Japanese court originally that was trying to try the Japanese, mm -hmm. 
is now turned into the Seoul Museum of Art in 2002. Uh -huh. But in this in this drama where they were filming it, they filmed the Seoul Museum of Art depicting that that was the Panmin Tukui's court. Uh, but it wasn't. They just used it for shooting purposes because it was, it was empty before they started making the Seoul Museum of Art. Wait, but it's it's very confusing. So um, it is not confusing <laughs> if you understood what it, what the the complexity of so what happened in the in the thirties uh, uh, through the fifties. There's the Japanese court, and that same court. And then in the fifties, there's the Panmin Togi court, which yeah, is a different building. Different building, Togi court, and today, the Japanese court. It's the Museum of Art. It's the Museum of Art, yeah. And but in that TV drama, yeah. they portray the Museum of Art yeah. as the Panmin Tuki Court. As the Panmin Tuki Court. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then the Panmin Tuki Court doesn't exist anymore because I think it got demolished. Because I mm -hmm. tried to find where it was, but I don't think it, it mm -hmm. doesn't exist anymore. And now they're operating in that little office that you found them. In oh, the, the... Yeah, yeah, right. In mm -hmm. the... Uh, the what is it? What do you call that? Minjok Munjeso. Oh, it was not. Okay. So the Min the Minjok Munjeso is actually all. Oh, uh, that's the group that published the Chinilpa Sajan. Yeah, uh, they're, the, they're the ones that published that Jap uh, Park Seung was uh, part of the Japanese mm -hmm. government, and and he vowed in, with his blood mm -hmm. that he would uh, die for Japanese imperialism. Mm -hmm. You know, ah, they're, okay. they're, they're 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 the kind of the whistleblowers of of, of Korea. But was that, that TV drama made by the Korean government? It was made by SBS. Uh, they're, they're private, no? Yeah, but see, there's so much fictionalization that's going on in Korean mm. history mm. That, that that is like producing a lot of conflict because you don't know what the truth is anymore. Do people in Korea take issue with that? That it was filmed that way? and Or you found it ironic? How, how, found it how, would, how would they know? Uh, people who care now. <laughs> people who care now, I'm sure, but like, I think I, I think I, I think I talked to the people at the Minjo Munjo and mm -hmm. they just like shook their head because they're like, <laughs> I don't remember. Like, yeah, they were just probably no, no, they shook their heads just like in, in shame or, oh. or something. You know. But okay, so there's that there's that one architecture building that mm -hmm. I, I talk about in Channel Three, mm -hmm. and then. Um, But yeah, so after you bring up the other ones, and then the source, yeah, yeah. I want to uh, hear more about, you know, how do you interpret this? You know, what's the what's the semantics out of this? The oh, oh yeah. So so okay. Um, so so, what's interesting is that in Seoul, you can you can like walk where all those protesters marched, mm -hmm. and it's still the same site where. Um, where they protested against Pakana in the Kyeongbokgung. Mm -hmm. So, where the, you know, the... Um, Isn't that Gwangamun? Yeah, Gwangamun, yeah. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry Gwangamun. Mm -hmm. I, ca I call it Kyeongbokgung, uh -huh. because I get off that, that, that little entrance, and then you can... I, I don't know the geography, but... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so what's interesting is, architecturally, mm -hmm. um, because they just, like, build buildings... They, they'll build, like, a sky-rise building in, like, less than a month. Mm -hmm. They're, like, super fast. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, and, and I noticed that a lot of archive, archive institutions, a lot of museums, mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, government buildings were being built at that time. Mm -hmm. A lot of things were being erected. So, mm -hmm. like, a lot of the old residual colonial architecture was being kind of hidden mm -hmm. by by these bigger buildings that were overshadowing it. So, like, mm -hmm. when you look at the city hall next to the next, um, in Channel 5, mm -hmm. the city hall building is now a library. Mm -hmm. And the, the new city hall building is right behind it in this, like, big old glass building. Mm -hmm. And you see it in the footage. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what, what, do, you, you, what do you use... What what, do you, what 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 does the government do to like kind of forget all this bad memories? Mm -hmm. Is make it into into a public space? Hmm. And and you know what I didn't what did I because didn't, if they try to demolish it, there with too much backlash. Well, if, well, you know, uh, Kim, uh, Kim Yong Sam demolished mm -hmm. 
the 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 bigger in Kyombokung there used to be a, a big old building mm-hmm. that was a constitutional uh, congress or, mm-hmm. or the national assembly mm-hmm. that was in front of the the blue house and the king's palace mm-hmm. and that that was supposed to block in front of all the all that the main walkway right <coughs> it was supposed to be like intentional to do that right mm-hmm. to block or whatever and he just he destroyed that and and all those artifacts um went to another I don't know they, they used to like they like held it for like a mu- they used it as a museum so like there's some really big uh, connection with cultural things mm-hmm. um, all the all the king's palaces are all turned into cult- cultural museums mm-hmm. so every every old architecture has become this kind of cultural thing mm-hmm. to, just because they're like either missing their history or they're trying to re- revitalize it or they're trying to like confront it or something um, even shockingly, which I didn't put in this video, mm. uh, in Channel 8, which I should have done, uh, was the the new ACC. So the the city hall in Gwangju that mm-hmm. the students occupied for eight or nine days, mm-hmm. that's now turned into a, a huge major art complex. Mm-hmm. And that is fucked up because when they're when they're doing all these things culturally... And they're not funding political projects. What do you? What does that do? That that is erasing mm. a lot of the struggles that these students did to occupy that building. And then the art that is exhibited in those buildings has nothing to do with it. Has with nothing to do with nothing to do with it. I visited. So the people who visit there for the first time think, oh, um, like a oh, richer, look, richer looking kind of convention mm. place. And there's this art. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, they come to this now big old... And there's no explanation anywhere of what, what their locate place is. Uh, yeah, there's like little placards. Oh, like, oh this, this is the memorial where the students uh-huh. occupied, blah, blah, blah. And then you're, and then mm. you're like, this is not, now this is like, wh- it's just like whitewashed everything. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think a lot of this a lot of this way of thinking for me architecturally started when um, the, the L.A. River. Mm-hmm. The L.A. River was full of graffiti. Mm-hmm. And once MOCA, the mm-hmm. Museum of Contemporary Art, made an exhibition for the graffiti, the history of graffiti, mm-hmm. at the same time, the city was funded $1.2 million to, to paint all of L.A. River. <laughs> so you're like... <laughs> if, it's, if, it's, uh, um, if it's uh naturally gro- grown art, uh, you just erase it, and then and you just, institutionalize it and you <laughs> finalize it and then you erase, you actually eradicate the actual history that actually happened. Mm-hmm. You know, so so it, it, it is kind of a very neoliberal move to mm-hmm. do that. And, and, and you'll see this in the future coming things mm-hmm. of like many, many places in the world. Mm-hmm. You'll see old, old atrocious sites that, that are now becoming cultural sites mm-hmm. or places where to conversate or to to feed upon mm-hmm. I think it's a pariah honestly I think I think these cultural s- institutions that they occupy these kind of old buildings mm-hmm. and try to re- rejuvenate it is 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 a pariah to to the actual truth of what happened mm-hmm. and but but then there's also what is the function if you left it empty mm-hmm. what are you going to use it for would the ideal usage be and you don't want to demolish the building making a, a museum about the democracy movement in those buildings? Um, is, would that be better? Or there, be better? there is a project that mm-hmm. does that there at the ACC. Mm-hmm. But they have the... they have So that's the problem. They have their own people hired by the government mm-hmm. to take care of all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So they're really like kind of sanitizing many of this history still. Even though mm-hmm. they, they like have all the archives, they're not going to show all of them to the public. Mm-hmm. Of course not. They're Just not going like to show. They've... They're not going to show that <coughs> ID number one three four five made a confession that he killed a pregnant woman. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not going to confess that stuff. Mm-hmm. They have all that footage. I'm sure they have all the. You know, mm-hmm. I I wouldn't doubt it because when we're talking about architecture, the king's palace was supposed to be really big, mm-hmm. and and the land was supposed to be really open. Because at that time, this is how I, I believe it, um, there was less population. So when you only have 30,000 people in, in the capital of Seoul, 
that 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 relation. Now we have like sixteen million, right? You see, you see, uh, probably like two thousand people a day if you're just walking the city, right? So if you're like in this like really open, like just imagine Kwangamun completely empty, mm-hmm. and you're walking towards the palace mm-hmm. on a hot sunny day, mm-hmm. and you're walking maybe you know half a mile to get there. How much, how much power that architecture speaks to you? Mm-hmm. That big giant door. That, yeah, that big giant door, that big giant palace back there, mm-hmm. and and you as just one individual walking towards it with nothing around you is like a is like a is like a a, a, a huge huge mirage, right? It's a facade, and and that is what back in the day created so much power over the people. It's just architecturally the the, the, the vast uh, structures that they were building, um, and of course it was built by them, but built mm-hmm. by the people who are walking these these spaces. Mm-hmm. Like look at the Egyptian temples, look at the Mayan temples, look at um, even the communist square. Mm-hmm. Um, these squares are meant to like show its power, right? But on the flip side of that. When you have protesters who fill these squares, and and any moment if they got angry, mm-hmm. and just wanted decided to to rush to those doors, mm-hmm. it eight hundred million people or eight hundred thousand people can overwhelm the blue house potentially. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That that amount of people. So so they didn't re- so they didn't really think about it in terms of back in the day they didn't think about oh um, there's going to be now eight, 16 million people in the future mm-hmm. um, maybe we shouldn't have this street that just goes straight to the architecture and have a T square you know mm-hmm. maybe they shouldn't have done that you know mm-hmm. maybe they shouldn't never built it that way when you look at the French Revolution they kind of built it the same way they built their their castles in the same kind of position. Mm-hmm. Not thinking that there would be a revolution or a purge of the oligarchy. Mm-hmm. So that's how I see it too. That these old architectural ways of urban planning or planning the the layout mm-hmm. sometimes benefit mm-hmm. the people because the old ways of building things do not work in today's future. So when you are... Um when you're showing the protest locations, like in New York or in Washington D.C., and then you show the uh, the same site on Google Maps, uh, yeah. showing the street photos from current day, what are you trying to do by doing that? Yeah, so that so that so I, I think that there was an exhaustion of the archive, mm-hmm. where I couldn't find much, mm-hmm. and the only thing I could find out was was where these protests happened. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like... Do oh, you, you mean there are no news about the... No, it's... Really? It's, it's kind of blacked out, yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, there was the AP archives where I found the ones in Chicago. You know, that Chicago one was very strange. Because it, you, you, you probably showed the WikiLeaks page, right? Uh-huh. So... It was not a newspaper article what you're showing, right? It was it was an embassy report to their home country about what was reported in the papers, wasn't it? Um so when they were protesting in front of the Washington State, mm-hmm. that was AP archive. But But the WikiLeaks page. Yeah, so the WikiLeaks it was from the Chicago Tribune. But that was under the files of the State Department. I believe it was a State Department official re- reporting to the superiors about what the Chicago Tribune reported. What? Yeah, exactly, exactly, right? exactly. What it's not the actual article. It, it was not an actual. It was. It was yeah. just a, 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 a correspondence of like, oh, finding this article. Someone, someone from the State Department found this article and then they reported it and then they filed that. <coughs> but that was ended up finding. That was <coughs> how so how that was how have we come where it's easier to search. Sort of leaked government documents that is to find a, a past publication. Um, it, it's ridiculously hard. I mean, Lexus Nexus, Le- Lexis Nexus. No, I've never been there. Um, 
maybe I should do some searching through there, but like uh, anything that so anything that was con- is connected to uh, actually it's kind of easier to search in, in in American systems because they they've all like come together. Mm-hmm. So like the New York Times, AP, the the National Editorial Association, they all have one one branch of a search engine. So if you search engine for one one article, you'll have like ten other other articles that come up with it. Well, what's that search engine? Um, Isn't that Nexus? Nexus? No, it may be. I, I use I, I paid for a service. It, it costs like five dollars to search on it, and I and I, and then you, it's like unlimited, unlimited downloads. So I just downloaded all this stuff. But that was for the '60s, from the '60s of Kim Jong Un. Mm-hmm. But from like the '70s on up. I couldn't find much articles. I, hmm. I tried. I tried like con- reconfiguring the name, mm-hmm. uh, his name, rewrote it, rewrote it in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't really work. Um, I actually, uh, all the all the, the the channel seven is still still more in further research. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess what I wanted to really convey about that uh, about the seventy or the channel seven is these kind of sites of protests. And then trying to follow this kind of investigation thing, mm-hmm. but then using graphology because c- certain protests, and it, there's a theme in all the protests. If you look at the protest signs, there's one person who, who's writing all the signs. Wait, what is graphology? So graphology is an investigation of handwriting. Mm-hmm. And and when you're using the investigation of handwriting. You're looking at all. I'm looking at all these protest signs throughout all this material. So trying to guess who the writer was based on the style. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but I'm I'm assuming that it's someone that is connected with Kim Jong Un, who who's was involved throughout all these protests. Uh-huh. And I, I believe that it's his writing. Kim I don't Zang know. Yeah, writing? I, I believe so. I don't know because he, he did calligraphy as well. Mm-hmm. But there's no there's no like fact for that. Mm-hmm. So so. It's like it's hard to like clarify who did it, mm-hmm. who was writing these protest signs, but then the, but there's clear fact that in every single footage that I have mm-hmm. of this, um, it seems to be made by the same person. It, it's made by the same person or the same group of people because all the protests, look, all the protest signs look the same in every site in New York, oh, in really? Chicago, in Washington, and in, even in and I. Because <laughs> when we when typically organizations go to a protest, we just. Now everyone grabs something and just write, usually. Right, but there's, there's like specific ways of handwriting. Writing, handwriting, mm-hmm. where you're like, that handwriting is definitely the one where they're protesting in front of the UN building, mm-hmm. and it's probably one of these people. But in one footage, Kim Jong Un doesn't come out. Like, so the one in front of the Washington State Department, Kim Jong Un is not there. But the handwriting is there, mm-hmm. so I'm like, that's how I connected it. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, there's still an association because of the protest signs. Mm-hmm. And so, this is kind of more of like not in detail. It's kind of a very upper way of like looking at cartography. Mm-hmm. And cartography is useful because I, I use cartography in all the archives. I, I mapped everything out. I, I mapped out even in the April Revolution. I was like investigating. Where they were protesting and all these signs, so I was looking at the magazines, and then I would actually take photos of the actual places, and I was doing um, uh, juxtapose. But well, that's not in the in the film. It's just my own personal uh, methods of how to uncover all this stuff. But I, I want to use Google and 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 all these sites where they're like all these sedition charges where they're like, oh, he he like. Say, uh, uh, spoke in front of the stadium, blah, 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 blah. But when you look at the architecture of all those buildings that I searched, many of them were rebuilt in the 80s. So you would never know where they actually protested, but the, you know that there was like a site in that specific air, general area mm-hmm. of where they protested, and you're like, it's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like that. I, I like <clears throat> mapping the protest. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might not be so compelling, but... I think that's what introduces Channel 8 because Channel 8 is like a, a full footage of a protest of when Jun Duan was trying to uh, come visit Los Angeles after the Kwangju massacre, mm-hmm. you know, and and that shows like the actual protest mm-hmm. of like moving image. Mm-hmm. 
the the ones the ones in Channel Seven is just like one still image. And you like see this very very briefly in the news clip. But there has to be more research, and I don't know where to go because it's either through Korean organizations that they may have the footage, or somewhere else. I just don't. I'm still investigating. I'm I'm, I'm creating more clues. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm finding more clues on how I can enter into mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the American archive system more. But I, I I think a lot of it is also a lot of it is very redacted. Hey, so what happened that Channel Eight? Um, people are protesting. At the end, the uh, cop makes a comment, oh, they got what they want, he's leaving. Did, yeah. did that happen? Yeah, so... Jeonduan so, cut his trip short and just went No, back? so, so Jeonduan left the, left, the, um, well, left the hotel. <laughs> too loud. Yeah, it was too <laughs> loud because if you look at ABC, Century, uh, ABC Entertainment Hotel, they have this like huge um, acoustic architecture. Mm-hmm. Like, so you have cars underneath and then you have, you have like a platform on top. It's kind of like the airport, so if you like scream down, it'll echo. Mm-hmm. And that acoustic is, I think, was what the protesters were using. Mm-hmm. They were using the microphones, they were screaming, mm-hmm. middle of the night. You know how many wealthy people are probably there, just like <laughs> trying to get their sleep? You know, wealthy people like their sleep. I mean... <laughs> These days when we try to protest late at night with equipment... I, I oh, think, it's banned. Yeah, the cops. Oh, it's been banned since then. Oh, yeah, okay. no, you can't, you can't use, you can't use uh, uh, loudspeakers anymore. And I think even without loudspeakers, beyond a certain time, you can't protest anymore in the residential area. Oh, um, yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't see protests at night. Unless it's, uh, it's uh, against Trump recently. <laughs> Those protests were uh, kind of interesting, but... Still, I have some criticism towards it because of the gridlock that we have in Los Angeles. We don't have a, a small uh, kind of built thing like in Korea, and it's not the oldest architecture uh, like in Europe. Mm-hmm. That and, and Los Angeles is, is gridlocked militaristically, so you can actually like, if there was in any case of conflict, you can actually enter in and, and, and try to stop everything. Mm-hmm. But I, I think also mm. in Los Angeles we don't they don't want they don't want any a lot of these crazy protests because of, of the violence that can ensure like in, in terms of like the Watts riots or and LA riots you know mm-hmm. I mean Los Angeles when they do protests they get rowdy you know it's a known fact even during the Lakers <coughs> Lakers games, they would just like destroy store sh- shops and you know mm-hmm. they don't. They're not organized protesters. They're mm-hmm. not, you know. So that, I think there's a, there's a big difference, I think. I mean, not to, like, undermine the actual organizers of, of the protesters, in like the labor marches and the May Day marches. Mm-hmm. Can't um, undermine those people who actually work hard to get these things organized. It takes a lot of effort. Anyway, yeah. In Channel 7... There's this extended footage of the family um, of Kim Sang Don, and they're all coming out one by one, and mom calls him out by yeah. the name. Yeah. Why was that there? Why was that there? Yeah, what's the point? Kim Sang Don was the guy who was sitting, right? Yeah, yeah, he, okay. he just became old. He has a, he has a yeah. beard. <laughs> he looks a little bit like Hamsa Khan now, I think. Yeah, yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of photos with Hamsa uh, Khan. <laughs> Actually, we have a lot of photos with them together. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I think I, I, I did that right after the coup d'etat too in Channel um, Channel Six. Mm-hmm. I believe in Channel Six uh, after the trials, he he went to go visit Chicago and mm-hmm. try to see the, try to experience some things. And they had Thanksgiving dinner and they had all these kind of holidays, personal film homes. And I kind of introduced that way because you see, so we're, we're talking about image and photograph, right? Remember in the earlier, like about Japan, and they're using a lot of photographic material equipment. I think it was introduced during that time because of that. Um. So his son was like an engineer for Bowen Owl, and he made all these patents for the film camera, actually. 
Engineer for what? He was an engineer to the for a film camp film ca- uh, company called Bell and Howell. Mm-hmm. And Bell and Howell, I think, still exists, but they made a lot of like high speed photographic equipment for military mm-hmm. and and just like consumer products, right? But Bell and Howell, these cameras actually survived World War Two mm-hmm. or World War, in the invasion of Normandy. The the cameramen would film all the footage with the with the bell and house because they're like ten pounds each and they're like they're like grenades like large they're like this big I have a few of them in my studio but they're like indestructible cameras because mm-hmm. they're just they're just so hev- like built heavily mm-hmm. so even if the lens was broken and everything the footage would be encapsulated and then someone could recover it by mm-hmm. by developing it later and seeing mm-hmm. what happens so, and that's what happened a lot mm-hmm. you know, with bell and house cameras. I don't know ex- exactly what he patented, but his son was aware of cameras, and, and so he made a he took a lot of footage of home videos. Like I, I we have like I have like eight hours of footage, mm-hmm. and so I had to like filter all these things. But I, I found that part really really beautiful because it was the same times of when he had the beard. And he was purchasing New York, and and it shows us elegance. Mm-hmm. It shows it shows us like oh I like. On my on my own time, mm-hmm. I go do all these crazy hardcore protests in front of UN buildings and and, and State Departments mm-hmm. and blah 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 in Chicago. But on my on my family time, mm-hmm. I have this really beautiful, loving family, and, mm-hmm. and and I get to appreciate that. And I think that shows kind of a character of what he was. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to show more personal things too, because that that also invokes the the viewer to to understand a, a little glimpse of who he was too during all these protests you know mm-hmm. he, he he's known as an activist now right i mean that's how we portray him in this in this installation but um and also his his children uh requested that i i try to make it try to show a, a personal side of him too and, and i actively not because only that request, but me as an artist, mm-hmm. I want to portray the, the personal glimpses of someone as well. I mean, everyone's interested in that, right? Like, I was always interested, interested in, when I was interested in musicians or, or artists, I would love to know about their personal life, mm-hmm. you know? And that, that's a great introspection, especially when you have the footage. Um, and so... I, I like that. Ju- I like that really a hard juxtaposition too. Mm-hmm. Like this, like huge family reunion, but then it's like all these like crazy protests that are happening, you mm-hmm. know, against like the, to restore democracy and all these things. You know, mm-hmm. I really, I really appreciate that. Um, I, I, I really appreciate that 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 is offered. You know, I think it's kind of. Uh, hmm. You know, kind of an intentional, um, how do we call this? It's kind of like a very intentional portrayal of like, kind of character building, I think. Um, I, I wish to add it more, I think. I, I, wish, I wish I could add more of this personal stuff. Because it really, like, he was like a really charismatic person. He wasn't like... Like 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 what what Paul said yesterday. He wasn't a rich man. He was really he was a farmer. You know he like went to America in the 1928s to farm, and then all that money he like used to like like when you brought that money over to Korea, it's like a lot of money, you know. But oh like, wait, he went. Oh, I missed that part. He went to the U.S. in 1928. Yeah, and after, then came back. Yeah, after um after being a student in Japan. He, from Yokohama, he went to Honolulu, and then from Honolulu, he went to San Francisco through a boat. Uh huh. And it's called the SS Siberia Maru. And this was picking strawberries in the farms. He was picking grapes <laughs> and peaches. Uh-huh. Yeah, in uh, San Francisco. So you would. That that. But that's also a hard with, line like with, independence with, movement, dude. With with uh, with uh, Cesar Chavez. <laughs> no, no, that was with uh, Dozong An Chang Ho's niece. Oh, okay. <laughs> he wrote. He write, He wrote about that, and I, I sent this to like 
Philip Moncuddy if they knew this niece, and he was like, yeah, the niece is like, it's either this side of the family or this side of the family. I just don't know yet. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but okay, that that's validated. There's mm-hmm. a, there is a connection. Um, and, and you know, the the Dongyuk Bundong was in San Francisco. No, I was just saying such a child because you know he comes in later at fifty, but it'd be funny if they're there. I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised because uh, Kim Dong <clears throat> Don. He did co- come to Los Angeles mm-hmm. around that, in that, around that. He, like, traveled for a bit throughout America. He, like, so that's kind of interesting, too, because Channel 7 depicts, like, him going to Chicago, New York, and, 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 all, and San Francisco and all these things. Mm-hmm. But he did this in his early life as well. Mm-hmm. So in 1928, he, he got a car and he did a road, road trip trap all the way across America and then winded up in New York and then he came back with his friends. Mm-hmm. So that kind of road trip kind of depicts this like this travel and this geography that he understood and he knew so well. But when he went when he went when he went in the seventies to protest, he like it's kind of new to him. But he's still like been to these cities like forty years behind. You know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's exciting. I think that that's, that that adds a, a, a layer, a deeper layer that maybe not not a lot of people can make a connection to. All right, but, so but I made that because it, I've been working on this thing for two. Um, um, if you picked one of all these things yeah. to tell someone who doesn't know about Kim Sang Dong, hey, Kim Sang Dong is this guy, among other things. But you know, this is very interesting. You need to look into it. What um, or yeah, uh, what what do you pick? Out of all these things, how I, I would. Like in, described in one sentence, which is really impossible, is that you can't summarize his whole life in one sentence. But mm-hmm. something that to someone who doesn't care too much about politics and doesn't know Kim Sang Dong, you wanna tell him about Kim Sang Dong and maybe exhibit, but you have time to tell him one thing. Well, I, I so so to pick, to pick his interest. So uh, what what I, what I norm what strategically what I normally do is I, I read the person. I have, I play my poker cards. Mm-hmm. So I have I have a few cards. I have the eight I have the eight channels. So I can I can really like choose a channel to tell him. Mm-hmm. So I'm like sometimes I'm like oh I'm working on a documentary about my my, my grandma who, who who had Alzheimer's and didn't remember. Boring. <laughs> and, you know and then some some people are some people are interested in it. Some people are not. But see and then. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, this dude was like prosecuting. Let's to a, to a guy from Korea actually. Let's do it. Let's keep it that way. To a guy from Korea who lives here and is in like their 50s or 40s. Oh, they don't even want to listen. <laughs> dude, I, I've attempted so many. They don't even want to listen. Mm-hmm. Trust me, they, these old 50-year-old okay. dudes do not. Someone who's in their 50s who is progressive. There are not many, but there exist. So, so usually what I would do would be like, "혹시 Kim Sang Dong 아세요?" No. <laughs> and then like, I know Kim Dae Jung, but not Kim Sang Dong. Yeah, Who's so Kim Sang Dong? Like, so then, and then if you say that, like, "Oh, Kim Dae Jung was the Cheja of Kim Sang Dong." Because, mm-hmm. because actually, Kim Dae Jung was was a student of 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 Kim Sang Dong or mm-hmm. inspiration. Still He's a son's name. Not not too interesting. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't think maybe. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think people are so interested in this stuff. So I was thinking about this, and um, but people are. I think watch it. for progressives, the most interesting part of all these different aspects of life of Kim Sang Dong yeah. is his experience with Amin Tugi. Yeah, you know what? I was just gonna say that because <laughs> one of my friends, he's like into like. Um, Pancho Villa and, 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 and like he like is interested in like the Zapatas and all mm-hmm. that. And when he was watching this film before I was exhibiting, he like wrote down the Pan and was like, Oh, I want to know more about it. This I think first way, for the listeners, uh, I think you tell them what Pan is. First, what is it in English? First, the Pan in English. <laughs> I, no, I I like the Korean word for it. I love the Korean word for it. The English word for it is. <coughs> The anti-nationalist. <laughs> um, but Pamintu is such a cheat because it's an acronym, at the end of the day. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's a longer. Yeah, it's like Pamintu Hengi, Tikpyo, something, you know. 
It's super long. <laughs> but but see, so the, the direct translation is like the anti-nationalist um, committee, uh, anti-nationalist act. Who? <laughs> Let's just say what it. It's what a it, long word. It's like it's like seven. Let's just say words. what it is. What is Pamintugi? So Pamintugi was. Uh, I, I, I want to say it was a decolonial committee. Mm-hmm. It was to decolonize from after liberation. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it, I think it was a kind of a very hard line, a very harsh way of decolonizing is to try all the, the Koreans who benefited from Japanese colonization. So, mm-hmm. so, the one, so the Koreans who were helping the Japanese colonize. It was a special Either. committee set up by Congress or... Oh. By yeah. the president? Or? No, no, no. no, by, not, not, no by not, president. not by the president. <laughs> it, was, it was set up by the committee of the, I think, the politicians. They passed the law. And then so by Congress? Yeah, and, the, and they created the special congressional <coughs> committee where there are some it's like political, but also like involvement from the citizenry too, I think. No? Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of the same thing as uh, what's going on with today, Pakane. To identify, they have, a, they have a choza, and potentially penalize all the Japanese collaborators. So, so they had a huge committee. They mm-hmm. had like, um, probably like thirty people in part of this committee, and, mm-hmm. and like they all just like went to go out and investigate in the streets. And it was mm-hmm. kind of a reconciliation kind of process. They were like, "Who did what? You know, who did this?" And mm-hmm. then you know, people were like, "Yeah, this guy like." And then there are different degrees of collaboration. Yeah, like, a lot of... Who dudes. sold the country to Japan? And, you know, uh, Yuan like Yong and all these guys. Like, who, who sold land? Who, who benefited from land mm-hmm. to sell out some of the independence movement? Who gave out the activists to the Japanese authorities yeah. when they're hiding? Yeah, who... And, like, who... Yeah, things like that. And then it was also, like, who was benefiting from, from economically? Mm-hmm. Who was... You know, the, who was a part of the gov- the Japanese government? Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a lot of things. Um, and he operated for about two years, I think. He published one report, it was er, report. one early report, and then got it started uh, disbanded for, it no? started, by the press. Yeah, it started in '48 and then it ended '49. Mm-hmm. And then the Korean War happened, and then all the archives just completely were destroyed. But all the oh, because it was in Seoul. Uh, a lot of the photographs you can't find any of the Panmunjomi photos. I had never seen one original photograph of the Panmunjomi members. I have, I have now the members. I have the whole map of I, I, when you look up uh, that one photo, the original yeah, right. photo. The one with us. Um, that is considered an art piece. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, it's uh, it's held at the National Folk Museum of Art. It's kind of funny because it's, it's an art piece because. There's the a frame. frame around it, and it's just it's just ridiculous <coughs> how, how they how they treat it. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty the the rounded. notation under it, which has the same drawing but like just outline and yeah, people's and, names. and every single names. And Is that part of the original? It's part of the original, and, oh. and so that 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 map of all the people, I like. It, I, I like Googled and, mm. and, and and many of the people in the back row were part of the department too. So it's basically row. the government staff page, staff website. <laughs> yeah, you because you have the picture and the names. Yeah, it's like a, it's just like a whole, it's like one of those like big old group large photos. You know? uh-huh. But um, I think what's interesting is that if people, if the people who are interested in reconciliations, mm-hmm. I think this is a really big interest in terms of like people who who like work with the UN or like people who are just like in, interested in human rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 it would be a really, really interesting case because none of that stuff was resolved. It was disbanded by the government, and then uh, n- just like the president, I think, someone hated it. I think because yeah, because he was his whole base was like all the coll- Japanese collaborators. Yeah, um, and he he ordered it to be disbanded. I think right. after a lot of controversy. Right. Wait, was it Congress? I, I don't no, know. no, no, no. Recent men directly yeah. disbanded it, and, and so they, mm-hmm. you know, they raided their their offices and did all that and took all the material. Um, it, the Kuksa Pyeongchang one, mm-hmm. they have the, all the the Pamintukui archives, mm-hmm. the actual documents of what they wrote, and there's a few of them that have uh, Kim Sang Dong's signature um, because you know he, they had a a few people had to sign off on them. Mm-hmm. 
And they're just really sad, like, cases. Like, one person sold out, like, nine people, and then all those nine people were just e- executed that same day by the mm-hmm. Japanese without any cause. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's, just, like, things that just, like, didn't make sense and why that happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure there's other stories, but they never, like, were prosecuted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These were, like, the accusations or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. But... I mean, the, the high-profiled ones mm-hmm. still got away, right? Like, a lot, a lot of the... High-profiled ones? High-profiled, high meaning, like, <coughs> they weren't just, like, on the street, like, telling telling on the on the independence movement. They were, they were like, benefiting significantly from the Japanese mm-hmm. government, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of those people just are, 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 they don't... Yeah, so the closing itself was controversial and of course progressive cares, progressives care all, about a lot of issues in Korea but um, this is one of them and some people believe that every problem that Korea has had since its founding mm-hmm. stems from the Bamin Tugi not having done its job properly unlike France. Uh, France always comes to us the model example of right because they had the French collaborators mm-hmm. and I make that connection as well. Mm-hmm. But we're, we we saw we all, we we're now making a new connection with uh, with Trump and Comey. Mm-hmm. You know he's actually <laughs> investigating Trump and, mm-hmm. and then he disbanded it. You know? <laughs> so so there's there's a lot of you know I I don't know too I don't know too much about Korea's social issues mm-hmm. today. Um, I, I I'm I'm kind of aware of it nowadays, mm-hmm. but. Um, I don't think we can blame the Panmin Tiki because mm-hmm. they did their job mm-hmm. and they were going to do it, but they were just stopped by recent men. Yeah. You know, we can blame recent men for stopping that. You know? So I think because of this, the fact that Kim Sang Don was the uh, head of the Panmin Tiki, he was vice president. Yeah. A vice president um, is uh, potentially the most interesting aspect I think of his biography well what's next for you then ooh what's next yeah so so maybe this is a little teaser but I've been I've been thinking about um healthcare mm-hmm. and I've been thinking about the uh, housing mm-hmm. and the financial crisis mm-hmm. and how these are correlated with uh and, and, and also um <coughs> helping the the community mm-hmm. and these string these th- these the things were were what my mom did, mm-hmm. and so my mom she left back, she left behind an archive, mm-hmm. and that archive uh, shows our house being uh, foreclosed mm-hmm. by the governments, uh, mm-hmm. or I mean by the banks, mm-hmm. and there was robo signed, so mm-hmm. so all the documents are forged, mm-hmm. and it shows um, it shows all of her cancer mm-hmm. things. So so right when she had cancer. Uh, she was unemployed for a while, and then they foreclosed on her home, knowing that she had cancer, and 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 actually the house was like literally almost debt free, and, mm-hmm. and my dad built the house, mm-hmm. so it was like ex- sounds like something a bank would do. <laughs> it, it was like, like seriously exceptional things, uh-huh. and um, and I, I think it would, it will it will, it, it, will, it will potentially talk about uh, the healthcare system and. And hope that we can have uh, a single payer system mm-hmm. and, and really help people with medical costs. Mm-hmm. And my mom was benefited from Medi Cal and and all these things, but um, so I, and, and she she did a lot. She did a lot too. She she had a she, she's been reading up in the articles back in the day. Uh, she helped a lot of. Um, so this actually speaks about a lot of the context in South America, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of civil war in the Honduras and Ecuador and Salvador in the a- early eighties and nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, the drug wars. It was kind of the Clinton administration that was doing all these things, mm-hmm. and um, there was a lot of immigrants that were coming here, mm-hmm. and and uh, she she was giving them jobs uh, doing uh, cleaning services, and so she never took any commission. From from the from the workers, but she would get a agency fee from from the clients, and which was like only like twenty five dollars or something, and, and you know these these workers would have like year long jobs, so it was it was a really good thing that she did, 
And she was really well known because her office was off uh, Parkview and 8th Street. That was like really close to MacArthur Park. And um, and so I, I want to create this narrative because it, it really I think these three themes are what's what has been impacting uh, people in Los Angeles and maybe even in America. It talks about undocumented workers. Her, her, her whole company or her, her office was closed in 2003 because the Bush administration uh, wanted to start deporting immigrants. And actually, this is the one the issue started happening, you know, mm-hmm. these undocumented workers and blah, blah, blah. So she was actually afraid that the government would, like, crack down on her or something because she was, you know, giving jobs to unemployed pe- or undocumented workers. Mm-hmm. And so she stopped her, her company, you know. Mm-hmm. It's a small little office. Um, I mean, it fed it, it fed us, but it really, you know, we didn't really like. I was we weren't my mom was so, a single mother who had cancer when I was eight years old. You know, health, she struggled with cancer her whole life. Health, housing, and immigration. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And these three things will be maybe in a similar format. I scan mm-hmm. all the photos and I can make texts. Um. And maybe it'll be actually uh, trilingual. It'll be um, in Spanish and English and Korean. Mm-hmm. Because it, because it, it was, you know, mm-hmm. it speaks about, it speaks about uh, the minority class that were targeted mm-hmm. by the banks, um, specifically. And, and and I have a suspicion that they were targeting people that were ill. Because if you know they can take they can take their houses mm-hmm. and they can die, but no one really care about it. But you know they they just mess with the wrong people, man. And, and that's my next project. And, All right. And that I don't need to go to any institutions. Oh, the cameras died. This so, one died. Yeah. So oh, that one died too. Yeah. So that's okay. Well, we have this. Um, so that. So that is like a whole whole nother mission, which I don't even need to find the in- archives because I have them all. <laughs> Your mom? Yep. Which should be easier to complete. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I could complete in like a year or two. I think I think two years would be ideal, but yeah. It's great. Yeah. I think that's an American narrative that... Uh, that a lot of people can understand. Those three are the core issues KRC works on. Huh? <laughs> Health, housing, and immigration. Yeah, yeah, it, it's in line with you. Maybe we'll, we'll show that one. <coughs> hmm? Maybe we'll show that one as well. 